Well, uh, willkommen in Zürich und die Zurich Jazz Talks. Well, welcome to Zurich and great to have you here. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me here. I'm loving it so far. Oh, that's, that's great to hear. <laughs> Let's start out with uh, your own music. I, I bet you must be getting tired of explaining to people what it actually is. Can you do it one more time, please? Uh, well, I'm not really tired of, of talking about it because I'm still discovering it myself. I'm still redefining, you know, who I am on a daily basis. Um, I've gone through so many musical journeys from having grown up in a house that was filled with uh, music of the 60s, the Beatles, Motown, all of that kind of stuff. And then in the 70s, you know, acquiring my own sense of music that I liked, James Brown, Earth, Wind and Fire, um, some of that kind of stuff. Um, and then in university, someone introduced me to jazz. Um, and so when I first started singing, I wanted to be like all of those heroes I'd amassed. It was only maybe into my third album or so that I started to feel like I wasn't expressing any of my Africanness. So I started an exploration of how I can infuse all of the music I loved with some of the elements of what it meant to be a Nigerian or West African. Um, and that's a voyage of discovery and exploration that I'm continuing till today, you know. Your music not only builds one bridge, but, but many of them, between continents, between cultures, between musical words. Which connection is the one that's most important to you, most dear to your heart? Well, if you'd asked me that question maybe 10, 15 years ago, it would, it would have been, the answer probably would have been something about building a bridge between uh, West African sensibilities and Western sensibilities. Um, but the journey's widened. I've met people from all over the world in, in the intervening years. And so I think that the, the most important connection is just any human connection. Um, when you sing songs that maybe have their roots in Western culture or African culture to someone from China and they get it, you know, that makes you stop and think, okay, so there's more to this than meets the eye. Or when you, you know, sing a cha-cha, uh, a Latin-based groove to someone in Mexico, but you sing entirely in Yoruba or in English, you know, so you've altered even their format. It makes you think and it makes you grow and it makes you reassess what you're doing and who you're doing it for. I was going to ask you about this, actually, you're singing in front of people who may or may not speak English at all. Um, does that do something to you or do you just not mind? Well, it, it really does do something to me. Um, and it wasn't a concept that I'd considered prior to finding myself in that situation. You, you write in the language you write and you don't know that it's going to take you to countries all over the world. So when you find yourself there, um, uh, so for instance, when I sing sad ballads, people respond, regardless of whether or not they speak English, in the same way, at the same points in the songs, you know, regardless. And, and often enough people come up and say, I don't know quite what you were talking about, my English isn't very good, maybe, but I, I felt what you were saying. So uh, I think speech and language and, uh, and all of that aspect of human expression is a much younger part of our interconnection than song and music and guttural primal sound. I think those things, it's almost like wolves howling. It just hits you where it hits you and you don't really need to know what they're saying. Just think, oh, something profound is taking place. I think that happens. And now you sing with a big band with the Zurich Jazz Orchestra mm. where actually somebody has arranged your own songs. Yes. What, 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 what kind of feeling is that for you? Oh, it's, it's phenomenal. I, I, write and, and I write the songs on my own. Um, I do a great deal of the uh, uh, instrumental arrangements for a rhythm section entirely on my own. I don't have a partner to bounce ideas off. So by the time a song or an album is finished, I'm so saturated with it. I don't want to hear it ever again in the format that I wrote it. So it's just so amazing. I, I, you know, I feel like almost like a childlike wonder 
when someone else takes it away and brings back this intricate, sophisticated, um, you know, bigger, bigger than, way bigger than what I perceived. You know, when they bring this thing back and it sounds like that, it, it never fails to amaze and impress me. The songs that we're talking about now, they're, they're not only songs, but they, uh, as, a, as a sequence of songs, kind of tell, tell a story or, or convey a feeling. Um, would that be a blueprint for like a documentary or a musical one day? Oh, I, I, what a great question. Yes, a musical would be a phenomenal idea because there's one story that runs all the way through the songs. It, it started with an event I witnessed, I wrote a song about, specifically about the event I was witnessing. And once I was done with that song, um, I, I got a sense that this profound thing I'd seen, a man who had been shot in his car, his wife was filming and their three-year-old daughter was on the back seat of the car and it all unfolded in a little, it was the early days of live streaming. Um, and it all unfolded in this little three, four minute clip and it was over with. And I thought, is that it? Do I now scroll on to the next video with full of kittens, cute kittens, or what? And I thought, no, there has to be more to it than that. Um, but it, it, it was a signifier, both the event and the format through which I was witnessing the event felt very much to be a signifier of the times we're living in. Because very quickly people started to comment under it and. Uh, it's all of that stuff. Um, and so if I could write a musical that kind of showed us as we now are through this event, that would be a real dream come true. It's something I'm beginning to work on. I'm beginning to sketch ideas for. It's early days yet, but I, I, I hope that I can get it done and that it will still be something people want to see, you know, presented in that way. Please. Be sure bring that to Zurich as well if you can. <laughs> I'd um, love to. There is actually two kinds of people. One one kind of people says art needs to be political, and the other kind of people says it mustn't be political any, in any way. What do you say about that? I think life is political, whether or not we're actively involved in politics. Um, I think everything we do, you know. Uh, adds to the greater whole of the movement of people's lives, economically, socially, and so on and so forth. But with regards to art, in a weird kind of way, I try not to be political in my music, but I won't shy away from describing a social truth, no matter how uncomfortable it is. And if someone else wants to attach a political interpretation to what I've written, that's cool, but I, I, I have no um, illusions or delusions of trying to change the world with my music. Music can't change the world. You know, big scary politicians can change the world if they want to, they have a will. But getting people to a place where you're not just passively absorbing the, the events around you, whether they're happy or they're sad, I think a musician has always done that. They've always sung about the good times and the bad times and the sad times and the happy times. So I'm, I'm part of that tradition, hopefully. Great. Hey, thank you so much, Ola. We do look forward to hearing your musical. Uh, we do oh. look forward to hearing a lot more from you anyhow. So <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Do appreciate you taking the time. Thank you for having Thanks me, Suzanne. So really enjoyable. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, Ola. Appreciate it.